In this video, we're taking a look at how to build a meeting summarizer in MindStudio. We are doing it in three steps. We are building one workflow where the meeting summarizer works within our UI. We're building another workflow where it works in a headless way. So we are taking something from HubSpot and sending it back to HubSpot. And then we're seeing the Zapier webhook, which is using the MindStudio UI and sending the final response to a Zapier webhook. In this first video, we're going to focus on the meeting summarizer itself. In the next videos, we're going to take a look at the Zapier and Zapier webhook workflows. What we're doing here is having a user input, which takes in the transcript, which is a file. Let's take a look at this user input. This user input is a upload file user input, which is the transcript of a meeting. The transcript of a meeting usually includes the name of the speakers, the timestamps, and what the meeting is about. It could also include the date of the meeting, which is very useful when outputting a summary. Going back to the no Zapier flow, the second step here is a simple send message block. This is what the prompt looks like. It says assistant, which is the AI, will now generate the meeting summary starting from the following transcript. And we're passing in the variable transcript. In case you're not an experienced MindStudio developer, let me just quickly look into what the variable transcript actually looks like. Let's go back to the transcript and look at the file type and processing section. File type says allow all extractable. This means that the user will be able to upload any sort of file that is extractable. If you click on the dropdown, you can see which files count as extractable. The XLSX, which is an Excel spreadsheet, and also usually the export for a Google Sheet. The CSV file, a very common type of export, including from Google Sheet or from Excel. DOCX, a Word document. TXT, a text file, something like a note. PDF, obviously a very popular format, and HTML, which is something that you get when you save a page on the internet because that page is usually saved as .html. This is the same in the data sources tab and follows through with the upload file type. We are letting the user upload whatever they want here as extractable. We are letting the user upload any sort of type here, but if you want to restrict it to PDF or to docx, we can do that. Let's go back to the flow. The prompt then says, the summary will include the following information in the proper markdown format. So we're instructing the model to do two things here. First of all, it should use markdown. Markdown is very popular for formatting prompts in the LLMs and the AIs in general. And here is what we're doing below. We are saying, first add the meeting summary. And there are two asterisks before that, which in markdown means H2, title two. Meeting summary, and then assistant will show the date of the summary, the participants in one line, and a one paragraph overview here. We are doing two things here. We are not only saying what the assistant should do, we are also formatting it exactly how we want the front end to look. We are saying, please output meeting summary, and below that, this is what the assistant should do, the operation it should perform before adding in any sort of text below this meeting summary headline. Then we have the key decisions, include the list of key decisions agreed upon during the meeting, plus a short description of the context. This is with three asterisks, which means it's an H3, a smaller kind of font and also lower importance kind of title, which leaves below the meeting summary. Then we have the action items, highlights, Q&A, next steps, and participants. In the participants section, we also provided an example. For example, John Smith, open parenthesis CEO, so the AI will understand here's where the role goes, contributed to the call in X way, will work on Epsilon for the next, and mention Z in the call. So it will mention what exactly they contributed to this call, the responsibilities for the next, and also who they are. Lastly, we output the date and time for the next meetings, so people can get ready for those, and other, so everything else. In the end, we have a section for notes for assistant. These are, there are always key decisions. We always want the AI to at least output one key decision. There are always highlights. In the same way, we also want the AI to output some sort of highlight for the meeting. We don't want it to say none. And lastly, salesperson will use this transcript to inform future decisions. This is important to let the AI understand what its purpose is, what this output will be used for. And in the end, we are using a chat terminator. 
The chat terminator is completely empty, there's no system introduction prompt, but remember that every send message block with a display to user behavior and sender user will be kept in memory, which means that this chat will have memory of everything here, which in turn have memory of the transcript. So whenever you chat with the AI in this instance, it will remember everything the AI outputted here, plus the entire context of the transcript, which is the document the user uploaded first. We are using the model Claude Trisonet for all of these. Claude Trisonet is a little bit better than Haiku, but Haiku should also work for this instance and it's much cheaper. So what we suggest you do, and this is a general suggestion for all Mind Studio workflows, is to test it out with Claude Haiku or Mistral, which are very, very cheap models, and then move on to Claude Trisonet, Claude Opus, GPT-4 Turbo, whatever you need for the higher intelligence layer. But you can test with a cheaper model so you don't consume too many tokens. You can always take a look at your current balance in the bottom left corner where you can see the total dollars in your workspace right now. These are for usage credits. This is completely separate from your workspace subscription. Now let's click on publish and test it out. Open the published app and click on new thread. We can upload a fake meeting. I have an extended meeting transcript and YouTube demo and YouTube demo too. Let's go on YouTube demo, which includes a small transcript of a quarterly strategic planning meeting call. Click on open and the first operation will be extracting the data from this file. You can see the file is uploaded and it's been processed. When that's done, we will call the AI with the send message block. So we will get the return, which is the summary. Let's click on the question mark icon and show debugger to see how this actually looks like in the backend. You can see there is a background message here and the message is generate the meeting summary. Assistant will now generate the meeting summary. And this is what we got. Here is the summary, meeting summary, date, participants, quarterly strategic meetings, key decisions, action items, highlights, Q&A, next step, participants, and date and time for the next meetings. And if I click on next, I can continue chatting with it. For example, I might ask, what did Morgan Bailey say in the meeting? As you can see, the AI has the full context of the previous two messages, and it said, according to the meeting summary, Morgan Bailey, the product manager, shared updates on the successful launch of new product features. Great. So this is our meeting summarizer, and it currently works only within the MindStudio UI when the user uploads a file. In the next video, we're taking a look at how to export this current summary to another application, let's say Slack. And in the final video, we're taking a look at how to completely navigate away from the MindStudio UI and use it within HubSpot. So if you have a call recording or a call transcript in HubSpot and you're providing the transcript somehow in a text format, the AI will go ahead, do the summary, and return it in HubSpot. Hope this helps and happy building.